how do you know if she or he is the one? That's the topic we're going to cover here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, today's topic came into being, I was watching a panel with, with a bunch of men and they basically had callers come in and, and give their, you know, ask questions or give perspectives. And then the gentleman, of course, shared their perspectives. And what I did is, if you guys catch me look down, is because I actually took some notes from the program on things that were actually covered. And so I'm going to go through this quickly because there was a lot of stuff that was actually covered. And just want to give my perspective on a lot of these, and then I'll close it out with, of course, my perspective on how do you know. But they talked about the 90-day rule. Uh, one of the gentlemen made the comment that for nine months is what it's going to take. And then, of course, I had a young lady tell me, well, a woman ain't going to wait nine months. And then uh, as far as married guys, a couple of married guys, one of them said, uh, what, divorce now at this point. One of them was talking about the fact that he saw the red flags before he came into the relationship, but he still got married. Uh, one of the other ones, because a couple of the guys, three of the guys, it was four guys, three of the four guys that have actually been divorced. But the, one of the other ones' comment was he believed ego was his issue. And the reason um, he came into the relationship believing being the man that he would be able to control the situation. And then we had, you know, the comment about stepping into a relationship with kids. Um, and a caller called in and was talking about, yeah, because you got to allow a man to, to be the man. And some women don't know how to raise kids. And then we talked about unconditional love. And, you know, one guy was saying if she cheats. And then they talked about timing could be wrong. And then ultimately I asked someone to ask me, well, what do, what do men really want and do they know? So I'll cover all those quickly. So we so this doesn't take an hour long because <laughs> we could and I can get very deep in any in all of these. But let's address this first one. When we're talking about the 90 day rule. You guys know how I feel about that. They threw that at the gentleman when he said, well, are you one of those 90 day guys? Well, the 90 day rule is basically you take 90 days to figure a person out. And really, the whole idea of the 90 day rule is basically saying 90 days before you go to bed with the person. Well, you guys know for me, that's one of the silliest things I've heard, but it's become very popular and a lot of people live by it. The only thing on a 90 day rule that I will agree with is the fact that, and I have a video out there where I really go into that, but the 90 days is cool from the perspective of you're saying, take time to get to know somebody. That's the extent of the 90 day rule that works for me. The rest of it, they can keep. The philosophy is um, like when you go uh, in for a job, they have a 90 day probation period. And at that time, they get to decide on whether to keep you or not. And they're saying that's pretty much what you should do in a relationship. And again, they're really talking sex. That's really it. This is That's really why I said I don't agree with it. Because really the whole conversation, it's not the 90 days that they to get to know a person. It's really what they're talking about. It's really to decide on whether you're going to be with them or not. And why would you put the most valuable thing that you have on this planet, which is you, on a calendar? Whether you give your body to a person should never be dictated by a calendar. That's why I totally disagree with the 90 days. And as far as putting a time limit on how long it takes for you to get to know a person before you actually give them your body, that's up to you. It depends on your values, your beliefs. Um, I'm not a person that buys into if you sleep with a person quickly, it's not going to last. Hey, there's people that went to bed the same day and got married, lived happily ever after. Um, you know, people say, I tell people, think about it. There's people that, that are prostitutes getting married every single day. There's people that get in marriages that they swingers, and so they're sleeping with other people. So quit telling people what people will and will not do. You're just saying based on your own beliefs, your own values, you wouldn't do it or whatever. But that's, you know, that's your perspective and your view, and that's okay. But don't make a blanket statement of what people will and will not do because it's not true. Uh, we talked about the gentleman who said waiting nine months. And basically what I got from his perspective is he wasn't saying nine months because everybody jumped on him on the show because they are saying taking nine months uh, to get to know someone and a relationship and you know you can get into a relationship quickly I didn't take that to mean what he said I took it as he's saying nine months is about what he needs to figure out if this is going to be a real relationship because he's not rushing into it he's got a lot of things going on and so therefore the relationship is not what's top on his list at this point and I fully get it and the reason I, I got what he was saying and I didn't jump the gun as I think a lot of people did is because I'm in the same boat that he is in is 
those that know my story know that I lost my wife six years ago to she she passed away to cancer, and um, and I haven't dated and it's not a it's not a thing where I'm trying to heal or you know the things that people are going to come up to and draw their own conclusions. It's I have a lot of projects, a lot of things that I'm working on right now, and the relationship is not at the top of my list. I'm open to it. I'm not blocking it. I'm ready for it. I've been ready from the, uh, since then. Um, I even had someone, and you guys may have heard me say this in other videos, people were like, well, how long is it going to take before you date again? And I was like, and this person had asked me this probably the same week that she passed away, and I said, I'm ready now if the person shows up. So I'm just letting you guys know it's not an emotional thing. It's not any of that, and that's why I can kind of grasp what that guy was talking about because that's where I'm at. I'm open to a relationship. I'm looking forward to that. Trust me. But I have a couple of things in works, and then hopefully here in the next few months, and you guys maybe heard me say that before too, in the next few months, I'm going to be open to, 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 to dating and that kind of stuff. And Because right now, I don't think I can give the relationship the time it deserves. And that's what I got from him, is that's what he's saying, is that it takes that long because he's not in a rush, and he needs to be able to give time to the relationship to see where it's going. And, and I get it. And, and again, I'm not into, he was saying nine months as far as holding hands or any of the other stuff. He, I didn't get that that's what he's saying. He's going to wait nine months for that to happen. He's just saying that's okay if that does happen and it takes that long because, again, he's not saying he's looking to be intimate quickly. And, folks, I, I just think everybody has the right to their own perspective on that. If the guy is willing to wait that long, that's on him. That doesn't make it good, bad, right, or wrong. Because you're a person that feels that you need to go to bed with somebody, that doesn't make it good, bad, right, or wrong. Society makes it sound like going to bed quickly is good uh, because you don't want to be a person holding off or whatever. And, you know, it's the human thing to do, folks. Trust me, a lot of people are finding out in this pandemic right now, a lot of them are going without. People that, that said they could never do it. Are, are going without folks it, it the mind is so powerful what we can and cannot do all depends on the thought process but anyway um but i had a young lady again saying there was nobody that would wait the nine months for a guy to do that and that's why i said quit putting your own thought processes on people because i remember i had people when they found out that me and terry waited for nine months nine years before we actually got married and a couple of young ladies that have heard that instantly jumped the gun and they were like, man, there's no way I'd have waited nine years for you. I'd have broke up a long time ago. And I told him, and I said, and that's probably why you and I have never been or never would be in a relationship because you're jumping the gun and never asked any questions and you're already assuming because you heard nine years, you don't drew conclusions. See, my wife and I went through the challenge of the fact that she was Japanese, I was black, and we had people that, in her family that were going to disown her for dating a black guy. So we had to go through that process and that's again a, a when we're talking about how do you find out if they're the right one, something that serious, are they willing to go through that and willing to be at a point where they're willing to allow that to happen, to allow those family members to basically say, well, you just have to disown me because I'm out. Are you, in a, are you with someone that's strong enough to make those kind of stances? Because to me, that's when you know a person, because again, we hear people talking about in-laws and family, the input they have on a relationship, and... <clears throat> when you marry a person, you marry their family, and so that's very important. And I tell people, no, it's only important if the family has influence. I, I'm very close to my family, but I make my own decisions. You guys follow me? And she was very close to her family, but she made her own decisions. So therefore, you had two people who were close to their families, but they make their own decisions. And therefore, we were willing to say, you guys can have your own beliefs and values. We're going to do what we believe is right. And when you find a person that's willing to do that, you move forward, which is what we did. Um, when we talk about, you know, because a couple of the married guys was on there, they were talking about some of the challenges they had was um, one of the guys was saying about he saw the red flags originally. And the other guy pretty much said the same thing. He said, but his ego got in the way and he was thinking inside the relationship he would be able to make the changes because he's the man. Folks, I keep trying to tell you guys, we got to get past this ego teaching that we make it sound like men are so smart, men are so intellectual, and men should be dominating the relationship. Folks, that's garbage. The only thing, because even the, the guy made the comment about, he had read a book about people coming together and, and, and buying, you know, being complimentary to each other, and that's what he's looking for. Folks. That you can't be complimentary and at the same time the guy be dominant. You guys get me? It, it doesn't work. I believe the philosophy that is 
is supposed to complement because that's the reason I teach again the four personalities because if you understand that we have all four you're strong in two your partner's usually strong two you're strong in the other two so if you use those your personalities those strengths then it gets you guys to take care of all four personalities and you become strong in all four as a unit. The only time that male ego thing steps in or pride or whatever you want to call it that I think holds true in a relationship is if the family has been threatened or attacked physically or mentally, that's when you need to step up and say, you got to go through me to get to my family. Aside from that, all that other stuff that people are talking about is a way to keep your relationship in shambles and to keep you guys struggling in your relationship and the bad advice that you get in from other people that try to te teach, which is one of the things that I was coming on here because they were talking about um, one of the comments the guy was saying because women didn't, did what, and this was a caller, he was making the comment that because if you step in a relationship where the person has kids, because a lot of women don't know how to um, raise kids, and that was his point. And when I heard that, I kind of chuckled. I said, because the the opposite of that would mean to say that you believe guys know how to raise kids. Huh? Folks, that's one of the, the most naive things you could ever believe. One thing our society teaches is, is because, again, I tell you, it's all programming. If we left people to their own way of being, we have no idea how men and women would turn out. None. Zero. Zilch. We don't really have any. But from the day you're born, you're given a blue, a blue blanket or a pink blanket and the programming begins. The world tells you how man's supposed to be, how a woman's supposed to be. That's the only reason we're having these challenges. We don't have no idea how men and women would be. So because of that, women in most cases as a younger are taught about love and about family and they play with dolls. And so they practice all that. Guys are told just the opposite to stay away from that. That's why guys are disconnected from a relational perspective because they're not taught that. Women are taught that. You guys get me? And when you understand the four personalities, you understand there's the relationship person and the relationship person, it doesn't matter male or female, they're totally in touch with the emotional sides and they're going to be that person in the family, male or female, that is going to be the one that the kids run to. You guys follow? Our society tries to make it sound like a man that's like that is weak. No, that's because that's his personality. The challenge is when a guy allows the world to tell him not to be like that, to follow some rules. Uh, what, what, what a guy calls them? He calls them brules. Um, he said the, the rules of the world, they're brules. He said they're BS rules is what they are. And I totally agree. A lot of this stuff that's out there, that's exactly what they are. But we keep passing it on from generation to generation. And the moment we stop living in this naive world, I think relationships will have a chance to exist. Um, so, but my take on that is in a relationship, we both play a major role. You play to your strengths, I play to mine. The only time that male thing comes into play is it's based on um, if the family has been attacked from a mental or physical state. Aside from that, we need to figure out who's strong in every single challenge that our family comes across. Whoever's better equipped should be the person that's up front. This is not a male or female conversation. This who's better equipped to lead in whatever the challenge is. So, but anyway, so we'll move on from there. And we had the guy talking about unconditional love. He, you know, because people were asking, well, can you find that? And he was saying, well, he doesn't know about unconditional love because one of the gentlemen, he said, because if a person cheats or steps outside, he said, that would mean that you would have to be willing to forgive that person for that and take them back in and, and into the relationship. And he says he doesn't know if he can do that. And one of the other gentlemen was like, no, I know I wouldn't be able to do that. Well, folks, that's another myth, the stuff we keep passing around. Unconditional love. You guys know, for me, I teach love is unconditional. Anything else is not love. Unconditional, you, when you learn to separate people from what they do, then you get what I'm talking about. Unconditional love is accepting a person, place, or thing exactly the way it is. That's love. That means it doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to be different. Anything in order for me to love you. I love you because I love you as a human being, as a thing, or whatever. That's unconditional love. People think your actions, which I don't agree with, the moment I disagree with that, then I no longer love you. That's where people have problems in relationships. Because the moment a person stops doing what you want them to do, you quote unquote, take your love back or you stop loving them. No, you don't. You can still love them and totally disagree with what they do and how they live their life. You guys know what I said? Love is just that. Accept people and, people and things just the way they are. And that's why I said when he's talking about the unconditional, if they cheat and that kind of stuff, I can love you 
but because of the fact that you cheated, and we talked about that a few weeks ago, that one hit me strong in terms of you're really allowing someone else to dictate your world by you even getting upset if a person cheated. And I was like, for me, because I've always felt that way. If they cheat, I'm out. But it was like, because what it is, is you basically have set up rules in the relationship without knowing it, that you have basically told your partner, these are things that you have to do in order to make me happy. And the moment you step outside, the, I'm no longer happy and I'm out. So the person that steps outside means they no longer did what you have decided they should do. And therefore you're out. And, um, and that means you've tied your, your emotions, your life into someone else making your life be a certain way for you to feel secure, I should say, because that's what we're talking about, secure and insecurity inside of a relationship. And your security has been taken away because they did something you didn't expect. And now all of a sudden you're running around hurt, depressed or whatever. And the key is that means you had you you didn't have any security within yourself and you were having your security inside of someone else and because they did their own free will your quote unquote security has been interrupted and i'm just like and i'm still battling that one because i told you guys i don't know if i'm still a person to say this uh i'm willing to allow you to you know if a person does step out i'm gonna say okay i'm gonna bring you back in but folks again that has nothing to do with love i can still love you I just, based on your actions, that's where my challenge is, based on your actions, and you're not basically living up to what I, again, I put in place, what I believe to be a part of a relationship, then that's why I said for me, I might, I, I've said I'll be gone, no ifs, ands, or buts. Fortunately, I didn't, never had to find that out, and hopefully I never will have to find that out, even in the next relationship. But anyway, so understand what unconditional love is. It has nothing to do with people's actions. And if you can do that, then yes, you can have unconditional love. That's why when people ask me, can I love again? Of course you can. Because you should never stop loving to begin with. Again, accepting people and things just the way they are. That is love, which means you can do it again. What you're asking is, can I become intimate again with someone else? Because someone maybe betrayed me or they didn't live up to what I wanted. That's the question people really had asked. Can I have an intimate relationship? Folks, that's totally different. And that you can do if you get past uh, holding someone else's past actions against the new people. In other words, because someone cheated on you, now everyone else has to pay the price for their cheating. You got to be able to close that chapter, close that door, say that was them. And when you could get those doors closed, change that story, then you could actually move forward into an intimate relationship. But can you love? Hopefully you never stopped. Uh, but anyway, someone was talking about timing could be wrong. And I'm not a person that buys into that. I believe when you come across the right person, timing will always be right. And by that, I'm saying, um, because his illustration was maybe uh, we hit it off, we got along, and then I'm leaving the country next. So the timing's not right. Well, I don't buy that. I believe totally if it is the right person, all other stuff will fall into play. Even if it, because we take a certain brief time with a person, maybe we were together for a week or two weeks and everything hit off and it was beautiful. And so now I'm like, wow, the timing is wrong because you are leaving the country or I'm leaving the country or whatever. And the timing's just, oh, this is crazy. Well, if that's the right person, things will work out. In other words, you'll move there, they'll move here. Something happens to stop whoever's traveling or you're open to traveling, whatever. Folks, I don't buy any of the other stuff. When the person is the right person, adjustments are made. That's how you know they're the right person. So, um, and then I had someone ask me, what do men really want and do they know? Well, unfortunately, men have been programmed, as I talked about earlier. They've been programmed that it's all about, and I was, I was taught this, and so I do know it to be true. And that's that men are told it's all about sleeping around. It's about sowing your oats. It's about how many women you can sleep with. That's what makes you the man. So the more women you sleep with, the, the bigger the man you are. And so that's what guys are taught. Women have been taught it's not about sleeping. You guys hear what I'm saying? Women are taught it's not about sleeping around. It's about being in a marriage. It's about finding a husband. It's about that's now in today's culture that has all started to change. That's why we're seeing now women that were sleeping around used to be called names. Now women can tell you they're sleeping around and everybody goes, yeah, well, you got to find out what you're getting into. 
wow, we've, we've totally shifted the thought process. And so now that's not being taught as much as it used to be taught. And that's why you're seeing the shift on why it seems like sex is so rapid because now that, 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 you know, where a lot of women would be, feel shameful to sleep around now they're using the same uh, logic that guys used to use. And that's, man, we just testing the tires. Just, you got to get out there and you got to see what's out there. And because again, it's programming. It's all now that we're telling people sex is not a big thing. So sleeping around is not a big thing. Folks, you got to care about yourself a, a little bit more than that. Um, and this is not to get totally intimate as far as your vision, but I tell people, I said, ladies, you got to think about a guy is entering your body. Nobody can ever get any closer than that. Think about that. Nobody can get closer to that than, than through sex. And for you to be very casual about that and just go, well, it was for the enjoyment of the moment. Got to care about yourself a little bit more than that. So again, I'm not telling you when and when not to sleep with people. That's totally up to you. But I'm saying you got to quit allowing the world to program you and make you think sex is no biggie. I'm doing it because it's enjoyable. Folks, you can enjoy all the cake you want to keep eating it and let's see what happens to your health. Just because something is something you enjoy doesn't mean you should actually be doing it. It's the same thing when they say, well, you know how men, how we look at women and we just, you know, we, we, uh, that's just the way we are. And guys, that's again, what you've been taught. It's about the women. If men couldn't be trusted and men couldn't be faithful, then all these conversations we keep having are mute because they're men things that they can't stop. The reality is you can't stop. You just choose not to stop. And I'm not a person that's going to go along with you and, and buy into that man thing. I'm just not the one. So anyway, I hope I kind of got, I hope I covered a lot of that. Um, but what I'm going to close with, which is really the whole topic of this, which is how do you know if they're the right person? And it's back to my book and it's back to the things that you guys keep hearing me talk about all the time. Get rid of your problems not your partner because your partner is any person that you're in a relationship with but in this conversation we're talking about the intimate partner it still holds true get you together first and then the relationships become simpler because now this is not trying to figure out how men are this is not about trying to figure out how women are what do men look for none of that stuff because there is no guidelines on what men are looking for. There are no guidelines on what women are looking for. It's what you as an individual are looking for, but that only takes place after you get yourself together, get clear on what you're looking for, which can include that list that we've talked about before where you hear people say make a list of the things you're looking for in a partner. And for me, as you know, I said the real reason for the list is after you look at that list and what you're looking for in a partner, you'll realize that that list is really for you to figure out the areas you need to make adjustments in in order to attract the person that you say you want. Because chances are very good after you put this list together, you don't actually qualify for the person that you're looking for. You make the adjustments and then that person is allowed to show up. Not saying they're totally complete. Because it's like what we said, you may be a person that wants to find a person that's into their health, but you may not be totally in great shape yourself, but you're doing the things, you're going to the gym, you're eating differently, you're doing all those things, and the person you find is in the same process. But see, we're moving in that direction, trying to find that person that's totally complete already. Folks, what gives you the right to think that you have the right to find someone who's already put in all the work and it's complete when you're not complete? You guys follow? Just like one of the young ladies called in on that show and she made the comment about um, the guy should have, he should be financially stable and have his stuff together. And then she was asked, well, how do you think the woman needs to? And she was like, oh, well, you know, that would be good. See, folks, that's the problem I have. Don't keep looking for a partner to have something you ain't got. You're talking about he's got to be stable. He's got to have his stuff together. But you're going to turn around and say, but I ain't got to have mine together. What? What? No. 
Don't put out there if you're looking for, if your man can't be in the process of accomplishing, then you can't be in the process. You follow? If you want a man that's totally fixed and got everything together, make sure you come to the table with everything fixed and got all your stuff together. You guys follow? Don't sit up here putting no standards on people that you can't live up to yourself. So anyway, but there's how to find the right person or the wrong person. I mean, the, the wrong person is basically if they don't match what you're looking for. But the right person, and do you know? You'll only know when you get clear on what you're looking for and clean you up. That's why I'm saying go through that list. Clean you up. Then it's easier to recognize people. Then it's easier to see the red flags. And, and, and again, my main thing I try to share and teach, quit interviewing people, quit putting people, go out and enjoy the process. You're not going to, because a lot of people, when they tell me about, I don't have time, you're going you to spend time anyway. The key is, if you get your stuff together, there's not a lot of time you're spending with folks anyway. Again, you guys have heard me say, if you got yourself together and you know where you're going, I can talk to you personally. Because one of the things they talked about again on the show was they were saying women know within about within about three minutes it's been proven they know uh, if they want to go to bed with you. Folks, all people do. We keep trying to make this male-female thing. All people do. And it's outside stuff that people are picking up at this point because I don't know you and I'm not going to know you totally in three minutes. So to say that she knows in three minutes, she can say she's totally attracted to you within three minutes as he can tell you he's totally attracted to you within three minutes. This again, I, folks, I just try and get us past all this male, female. It's a human thing. We all pick up and the initially it's going to be physical. So for those people that I know that may interrupt your thought pattern when you go, well, that's so shallow when a person looks at the exterior. That's all I can go by if I don't know you, right? The getting to know you part is when it becomes shallow if I get to know you and the only reason that I'm not going further is exterior, right? If you line up on everything else on the list and I get to cross them off, and the only thing I'm crossing that, that, that kicks you out of the picture is something external. Like, you know, like I talked about that movie, uh, 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 what is it, is it Boomerang? I think it's Boomerang, where he was knocking women out of the picture just because of her feet. Now that's shallow. She qualifies for everything else, but because of her feet, that's shallow. But folks, the exterior stuff in the beginning, that's all you have to go by. The other stuff, that's a part of the relating, the dating, and getting to know people. But first, get clear on what you're looking for, what you want. Then dating again becomes simpler because now I'm just trying to see, are you headed in the same direction? I use the analogy of what I call the, the different color roads. And I shared this with a young man. I was sharing this, and this is how I came up with the idea because he's 19, and he said he had found the one. And... And I wanted to make sure he understood what I was saying. And for some reason, these roads popped in my mind. And I said, if you're on the yellow road and she's on the red road, do you understand if you pull her off of the yellow, off of the red road and onto the yellow road, she's going to always keep looking at the red road. Why? Because she's only on the yellow road because you pulled her over there, not because she wanted to. She didn't come over there on her own. Eventually, she's going to resent you, and eventually your relationship is going to have problems. What you need to do is find someone who's on the same color road as you. If one day you decide to go on the red road on your own, not because of her, but because you're on the red road and you guys cross paths, cool. That's why I was talking about earlier about the fact that if it's meant to be, all the other stuff will fall into place. The same thing, if, you happen, if she happens to come on the yellow road, not because of you, but because she wants to be on the yellow road and you cross paths, cool. But do not go and get somebody and pull them off their road. And again, you guys have maybe heard this story, but uh, uh, one of uh, his friends had heard us having this conversation. He's like, oh, I love that. He said, but you know what? I found out all the fine women on the blue road. And I laughed and, uh, and I told him, I said, but you know why all the fine women on the blue road, right? And he's like, huh? And I said, because your focus is on the blue road. So all the fine women on your road that would qualify for what you're looking for, you never saw them because your focus was on the other road. And he was like, oh. 
Ooh, I get it. So folks, if you understand what I'm saying, this all comes to the same thing. Get you together first. Know the path that you're on, which color road that you're on. Follow that path. And then it becomes, are you on the same path? You guys get me? That's how you decide if, if for those of you who are trying to cut out wasting time, as you call it, that's how you do that is you get clear. Know the path that you're taking, and now it's not about trying to figure out how men or women are, what a man wants, what a woman doesn't, because none of that matters. It's only where I'm headed, which means what do I want, what am I looking for, a person that's headed in the same direction. That will complement me, because again, I'm strong in two, they'll be strong in two, we complement and we're headed in the same path and allow your partner to play their their strength you play yours when you can find that harmony is here and it has arrived and you'll know you know there is no time limit on how long we're going to wait you know there's people that's gotten married in a month weeks and lasted there's people that did it and got uh annulled because it didn't work which is, some people were like did couldn't you guys tell from the start so but what i'm saying is nobody can tell you when Nobody can tell you whether you're right or wrong. Just get clear on what you're looking for, the path you're headed on, and all this other stuff will fall into place. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who uh, are on Self uh, Love Monday, I'll look forward to talking to you on Monday. And that's where we get into talking about self and loving you. And then we also, for those of you who do the Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you again on Thursday. And if you, uh, when you guys get the chance, swing by. Um, you can check out ronsbusinesscard.com. That's probably the best one right now, ronsbusinesscard.com. And that'll basically tie you into everything that I have out here, everything that I'm doing, my books, my podcasts, um, everything that I'm doing, the free download of my uh, ebook. Everything, if you just go to ronsbusinesscard.com, it'll pull up like a little card and you'll have little things you can click and get to everything I'm doing. So I look forward to hopefully meeting you guys personally one day soon. And in the meantime, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.